Okay friends, so uh, one very basic point needs uh, justification. <coughs> like from the very starting we have claimed um, that the uh, room temperature or some temperature around the room temperature is not so significant so that it can generate some significant amount of free carriers as we have understood that the thermal energy at room temperature or near about room temperature is around only um, 25 milli electron volts so 25 milli electron volts in front of this for silicon it is uh, 1.1 uh, electron volt so the 25 milli electron volt is almost negligible in front of this and therefore we have argued already that there cannot be any significant transition from um, valence band to conduction band and by that claim we should not say that any free carrier could be available at any temperature around room temperature not even at 200 degree Kelvin, not even at 300 degree Kelvin, not even at 600 degree Kelvin or 400, 500 degree Kelvin but still why we are showing those many numbers so where do they come from at, at all these temperatures so it's, it's all statistical phenomena possibly I discussed this but again I'll briefly make this point very clear that all these uh, numbers or all these probabilities are only statistical so <coughs> uh, at room temperature and well below room temperature and above room temperature the thermal energy corresponding thermal energy is not so significant it is definitely very poor and it cannot result into any significant transition from valence band to conduction band but this is only as i'm saying is a statistical fact so uh, only you can say that uh, we cannot guarantee of any transition so we can only uh, we can only uh, demand or we can only uh, indicate some probability we say that almost 99% or 99.9% .9 of um, electrons uh, are well attached with their parent atom so they are bound and they are found in the valence band but still there is 0.1% or let's say 0.01% pro uh, probability possible that, um, uh, that the covalent bonds are broken somewhere and the corresponding electrons become free and they transit from valence band to conduction band and if you try to calculate the 0.1% or 0.01% of the all possible electrons of 10 to the power 22 atoms into 4 because one atom contains 4 valence electrons so, um, so 4 into 10 to the power 22 number of electrons per unit volumes are available and for that if you uh, if you try to find 0.1% or 1% or 0.01% probability the amount will definitely come around this so therefore this figure appears to be again I'm making a very very uh, proper caution to you that this figure proves to be misleading because it, it appears like this is a very healthy figure uh, not this this is definitely a good figure but uh, the, the temperature around room temperature and below that or slightly above that also is not so significant so that it can result into some good numbers so these numbers are not good 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 8 10 to the power 10 10 to the power 11 or 10 to the power even even 12 is not a high number a significant number starts from 10 to the power 14 10 to the power 15 10 to the power 16 to have a good concentration of free carriers so therefore these numbers are only very very much negligible uh, and out of the possible uh, states here uh, so those effective density of states are uh, we, we mentioned of the order of 10 to the power 19 so out of 10 to the power 19 available states here we have only occupied 10 to the power 10 at room temperature so therefore we have not utilized even a 1% or 0.01% of it so so therefore it is a statistical fact that almost 99.9 percent .9 of cases are still uh, in the valence band or 99.9 .9 percent of electrons are still valence band they are well attached with their parent atom with their atom they are being shared by in the in the covalent bond but 0.1 percent or 0.01 percent of it may get free uh, because they may have some random phenomena some thermal agitation and they are already excited and this room temperature energy or near about room temperature energy that thermal energy may be significant in very very rare cases rare to rarest cases so that they have a significant transition
so with this uh, with this statistical understanding with this ensemble mean understanding we can uh, perceive that this figure or these many free electrons and free holes are available and with these figures we also attached in in parenthesis that this figure is negligible only because we have not exploited the full potential of the available amount of free seats or available amount of um, number of atoms per cubic volume so okay this is one point which may come in your mind that if we are saying that at room temperature there cannot be any significant transition because the thermal energy is low then why some electrons and holes are there because those some electrons and holes are very very poor number which are uh, this is very very poor number which is almost negligible Another very important point is maybe in between I discussed and we observed the fact that in intrinsic semiconductor when we are increasing the temperature then this is the profile of this this green one and then this red all, all three red profile these are the profile of Fermi Dirac function. For all those cases when we are increasing the temperature in this direction the curve is being more um, or it's being uh, steeper and steeper so it's being like that being like that or it may become like that in this direction <coughs> or it is being less steeper if you rotate it like this so if you observe the Fermi Dirac function to the vertical axis and the energy to the horizontal axis then you can say as temperature increases the curve become less steeper so why does this happen because one side we are saying that Fermi level is an indication of significant number of free carriers in the um, conduction band like significant number of electrons in the conduction band and significant number of free holes in the valence band so if the fermi level defines those significant numbers of free carriers then as temperature increases and we are arguing that the amount of free carriers is increasing then the fermi level should go up or should come down something should happen this is a confusion this is a doubt which may appear in our mind so to understand this again I am reproducing the same figure and uh, this is really an important concept so uh, let us give some more time to it. Okay, so um, uh, let us indicate a rough figure at uh, with the energy band diagram. Let's say this is the case. So in this direction we have the Fermi level plotted also. So this is the same direction for uh, Fermi Dirac function FFE the probability of any energy state E being occupied by an electron so that is FFE we have already understood that and this vertical direction is for the obviously for the energy increasing energy for the electrons <coughs> so again I am reproducing that at this I have called analytically we have seen so far we have only analytically seen that the Fermi level should be somewhere in between uh, very soon we'll be having a, a proof for it but uh, it is sufficient enough to assume that uh, the Fermi level lies in between almost in the mid middle point of the uh, band gap so this is EFI the Fermi level, intrinsic Fermi level or Fermi level of the intrinsic semiconductor. This is EC, let's say this is EV. Then we have seen that the it goes by this. So in on this scale, this is the probability of 0.5 this is the probability of 0 and this is the probability 1 100% probability at 0 degree Kelvin now at room temperature let me plot it again at room temperature I am arguing that it goes something like this ok so this one is at temperature and this one is at room temperature that means 300 degree Kelvin okay 
So my doubt is, the confusion is that one side we are saying from the atomic structure that if we are increasing the temperature above absolute zero and we are going closer to the room temperature or nearby room temperature, then the uh, effective number of uh, the, the free uh, electrons and free holes, they increase because the thermal agitation increases. So still at room temperature, they go around 10 to the power 10 number of free carriers. So let me indicate free carriers by Ni. So Ni is approximately 0 here and at this the Ni reaches around 10 to the power 10. This is per centimeter cube per unit volume. So although it is negligible but they have increased ultimately. So why, while they increase then Fermi level should go up or should come down because one said I have said that Fermi level is an indication of effective number of free carriers. So how should we correlate? So I am producing two important cases here. Achha, first of all, um, we should have another um, uh, picture for this uh, because most of the time in some papers or, or somewhere in the academic books we may find that the Fermi level is plotted onto the vertical axis and energy is plotted onto this axis. So with that convention, if we see if this is energy and this is Fermi Dirac function, then let me call this so increasing amount of energy so let me call this one as ec let me call this one as ev so somewhere in between we should have the fermi level so this is fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor so far we have seen that uh, at ev it is full there is a full probability and just after ef there is zero probability. So this probability value is 1, there is some value as 0.5. So both are same figures. You can just rotate it like this or rotate it like this. So you take energy this side horizontal axis and take Fermi Dirac function onto the vertical axis. So this represents the same figure. So at room temperature, what has happened? That at room temperature it has gone like this. So, this is happening at absolute zero and this is happening at 300 degree Kelvin. So both are same figures, but sometimes we may find this kind of figure in the literature, so therefore I have plotted it. Now there could be two important cases, one is, let's say case A, it indicates indicates <coughs> that if temperature is increased, temperature varies, generally we are considering that it is increasing above zero. So when that happens, so we have seen we have to start with this picture. Although this is the picture of 0 degree Kelvin, this is only hypothetical because as we have argued that we cannot achieve um, the absolute zero ever. We can only hypothetically assume a case when this may happen. So, but, but this is a good reference point. Any temperature above uh, absolute zero is well identified with this reference. So now if we increase the temperature, so at some temperature T1 we have seen, we have argued that this may happen this then at some other temperature or let me make it less rapid like this or at some temperature this may be this so obviously if I name them if uh, let's say this is T3, this is T2 and this is T1. So 
T3 is greater than T2 is greater than T1. This we have already seen. Now this is just a clarification of that. So as you see the Fermi level, each and every curve is passing through Fermi level. So that's what we want to understand that why Fermi level is not moving up and down. See, uh, in the case of intrinsic semiconductor, if temperature increases, then there will occur some thermal agitation and due to that thermal agitation, more thermal energy, more and more covalent bonds will break. So although if we are uh, close to the room temperature, the, there won't be very high significant numbers of covalent bond breaking. So still, there is a relative increase in number of free carriers, but those free carriers are still not very, very high so that you compete those numbers with the number of atoms available per cubic volume. So, <clears throat> if temperature is increased to this side, then more and more covalent bonds are being broken, more and more electrons are being freed and where those electrons are coming from in the energy band diagram, we understand that those free electrons are coming from here to here. Means one covalent bond breaking is similar to one transition from valence band to conduction band. So if, let's say, assume a case of T1, so in the case of T1, or let, let's understand the case of T2 because that is more clear here, like this, and let's say like this. So this is delta E above EF. And let's say I take the same delta E below E. <clears throat> so understand, if we have a reference Fermi level where the occupancy of whose, uh, the, the uh, occupancy, the probability of occupancy of this level is exactly half. Then because this graph is very symmetrical, all those graphs, if you can see, they are very, very symmetrical. So for any of the graph, if we move delta E above, then the probability of this state of being filled by, let's say, if it is F, F, E1, suppose this is E1, where E1 is E, F plus delta E, and this was E2, so E2 is E, F minus delta E. So if we equally move up or down, then if the Fermi level, if the probability of being occupancy of this is this, and if we find for this EF E2, then if you see very clearly for T2, this is the value, and for even this is the value. So this amount is same as this amount. So, or, or I'm saying that this value is same as 1 minus this value. So this will be same as 1 minus F F E1. That means the probability for this energy state E1 of being filled by an electron will be exactly same as probability of this state E2 of not being filled by an electron. That means the probability, because this is not being free by an electron. That means probability of being not being filled. That means it gives the equal opportunity for hole. And this is probability of being filled. So if let's say this is a value point let it is 0 0.1 then f f e2 is 0 0.9 so that 1 minus this still becomes so this value is 0 0.1 so this becomes 0 0.9 so that we need to understand because and it is happening all because of the symmetric nature of f f e Fermi Dirac function above the Fermi level and below the Fermi level. <clears throat> so if temperature is increasing, then if one energy state is being occupied by an electron or if its probability is increased, then similarly the same energy state at equal distance below the Fermi level is losing that probability by the same amount. As you see, 
in the third case it will become more clear if in this case if, if we have increased the temperature so for the E1 uh, then this value is at T1 and this value was at T1 I'm sorry this was for T2 T2 so now because we have increased temperature from this T2 curve to T3 so then this gets modified as F F T3 E1 because we have increased the temperature so probability has increased from this to this value for the same E1 so there is a better probability of being filled so there is a better probability for not being filled by an electron at the same energy level well below with the equal amount delta E below the uh, Fermi level so for this earlier it was this and so now it has become this so this will also get modified as F F T3 E2 as T2 goes to T3 as T2 goes to T3 so as T2 increases T3 above T2 goes to T3 a newer value then if the probability of being filled for a particular energy state increases then probability of not being filled for the corresponding energy state the same state which is at the lower value of not being filled reduces by the same amount that means if analytically what does it mean it means that if there is an electron possibly at this state then with the same probability there will be a hole at the state E2 because E1 corresponds to E2 E1 is delta E amount above EF E2 is delta E amount below EF so if there is a chance if there is a better chance of um, an electron at E1 there will be the same chance for a hole to be at E2 that's what we understand and that's we know analytically because we are saying as covalent bond is broken due to increase in temperature then there always exists a pair one electron becomes free it always it makes a corresponding hole also so there is not like only electrons are being free there is a there are the equal amount of holes are also being freed so that thing is understood by the uh, uniform or symmetry of the Fermi level so uh, in short the you can say the symmetry of F F E above and below E F that indicates it indicates that equal number of electrons and holes are being generated so if <coughs> you see if you are increasing the probability here you are decreasing the probability here so therefore 0.5 the probability 0.5 will remain at the same level so therefore Fermi level remains at the same place so that's very interesting so please understand this that because the symmetry is maintained if this value is maintained by this value so this value is 1 minus FFE this value is corresponding FFE so because of this symmetry it indicates the um, an electron is always generated in pair with a hole so therefore EF is always maintained if the cause is temperature variation so please remember this is under this case if temperature varies and temperature increase or temperature variation is an uh, unbiased effect unbiased means the thermal agitation in an unbiased effect it always makes up uh, same amount of uh, free carriers means equal number of electrons equal number of hole creation so therefore uh, this cause will always increase uh, delta n means uh, number of electrons and number of holes with the equal amount okay <coughs> Now, uh, so, so the where this phenomena will generally occur? Because in intrinsic semiconductor, there is no another important observation. By no means, we can have only electrons uh, increment or only holes increment. So we only have a tool, we only have a property like temperature variation, which can cause the free uh, carrier generation. So therefore, with the temperature increment 
both will be in the same amount number of electrons generated will be same as number of holes generated and therefore the symmetry will be maintained and therefore Fermi level will be maintained at the half or wherever it is so we are arguing that it is at the half of the band gap so it will be maintained at that place but in the second case let's say somehow if we shift it so in this case we are not shifting the Fermi FFE FFE is only getting broadening here or it is getting broadening here so it is moving like this but suppose uh, the profile this if we somehow this T2 profile just focus on that if we somehow increase this graph up or we shift this graph up then symmetry will not be maintained across Fermi level if somehow it happens then Fermi level will have to move upward or downwards in order to maintain the symmetry so therefore the case B, let me plot it. So case B. So although we have not gone into the extrinsic semiconductors we have not understood the doping phenomena but let us assume we introduce some impurities externally into the intrinsic semiconductor then how this scenario will change with the same token this is the let's say this is ev and this is efi and this is ec and this is the axis for FFE value and so we are again as a reference we are starting from the 0 degree Kelvin then at room temperature so it is 1 somewhere here we will be having 0 0.5 and this is 0 so, okay, but this is not relevant here. Let me plot it for the room temperature. So, let this happen for the room temperature. So, here if we are not changing the temperature, let's say somehow we have kept the temperature constant. So, if that has happened, let's say temperature is constant, kept constant somehow and we only introduce number of free electrons how this happens is a study of extrinsic semiconductor doping phenomena but, but somehow believe that we only introduce some free electrons so earlier there were some 10 to the power 10 electrons per unit volume that means per centimeter cube and there were 10 to the power 10 holes per centimeter cube now we only increase delta E that means we increase delta amount which is let's say 10 to the power 12 let's say so 10 to the power 12 plus 10 to the power 10 would be 10 to the power 12 significantly because this is a bigger number but big big uh, two orders higher than this so th that we shall be looking on uh, later on in detail <coughs> but for the time being for the comparison of two cases I am just briefly introducing this effect so if you do doping you only introduce if you are only introducing number of electrons then what is happening then this whole FFE at room temperature shifts up so if it shifts up it becomes something let's say something like this so you see this black curve has gone up that this black curve has gone up in the earlier case in case a it was not shifting there was equal widening here and here so it was maintaining the symmetry around EFI but here the symmetry is not maintained around EFI so in this case symmetry is not maintained around EFI 
means the intrinsic Fermi level, means the half mid band of the band gap. So it means either only free electrons increase or only free holes are increasing. So in, in my example, I am saying that free electrons are only increasing. And this you can see that the value uh, for any energy level here, which is delta E above EFI and any equal corresponding level here, which is delta E above. So this is E2, which is EFI minus delta E and this is E1, which is EFI plus delta E. So here, <coughs> this energy level which corresponds to this energy level, they do not have same value. So here, F, F, E2 is not same as 1 minus F, F, E1. That means, it's still the probability of occupancy by a hole is maintained at the previous smaller value but for the corresponding energy in the conduction band the probability of being filled by an electron has got increased from this to this so therefore it analytically it means that only free number of electrons are increasing and free holes are still being same significantly again statistically so that means a certain type of carrier is only increasing. So in Fermi level we can we can see that it is going up. So uh, whether this earlier Fermi level is correct one, is it still the same Fermi level or will it be the Fermi, new Fermi level is still? No, because now the probability of value half has gone somewhere here. Okay, because at this level you are getting this probability for the, uh, the, the, the earlier Fermi level is finding a higher probability. So this should not be the Fermi level. Therefore Fermi level is still defined as that energy level whose occupancy of being filled by an electron is exactly half. So we have to look for half value 0.5 and draw a vertical line wherever it cuts the new Fermi Dirac function. So new Fermi Dirac function is this blue one. So it is here, so therefore this will be the new Fermi level which we simply indicate as EF. So that is the extrinsic Fermi level and this was intrinsic Fermi level. So in order to mention it as intrinsic Fermi level we are um, indicating as EFI here. So now the significant, the, uh, the actual Fermi level is this new one. So therefore, now because Fermi level is going up, that means the probability where 0.5 will happen is going up, that means more and more higher energy levels are getting better probability of being filled by an electron. Therefore, there is there are more number of free electrons. And the probability of being filled uh, or not being filled by an electron is either maintained or reducing. So therefore, the number of holes are actually reducing or almost same actually they reduce uh, with the mass action law we'll say we'll see that later on but the there is no significant change in the number of holes but there is a significant change in the number of electrons the same case may happen if you introduce uh, free holes here only so i have taken this case only external electrons have been introduced. If you dope external holes only, if you maintain this as this number and you increase some delta H here, number of holes, then the Fermi level will come down. Newer Fermi level will come down. Okay, so we'll see this effect, all these effects there, but you can have in, in your mind that if the temperature increases, now if you increase the temperature for this case, for the blue case, uh, where you have introduced the uh, external free carries. So now if you increase the <coughs> temperature, so uh, if temperature increases, then uh, the widening will be maintained. So this will happen. So therefore, this curve is new EF, uh, sorry, 
न्यू एफ एफ ई एट टी वन एंड दिस इज न्यू एफ एफ ई एट टी टू वेर टी टू इज ग्रेटर देन टी वन सो एट अ न्यूअर पिक्चर इफ यू नाउ इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर यू डू नॉट डू टॉपिंग नाउ यू ओनली इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर देन वॉट विल हैपन सो इन दैट केस ओनली द broadening will increase so for the same level this value has come from this to this and this value has gone from this to this so across this point the broadening will only happen so for this fermi level now there is a symmetry so symmetry is not maintained with this but with temperature increase the symmetry will is still be maintained but for ef new ef not ef i this new ef it looks like as the previous case so the only you look at the blue cases or blue curves so it looks like that if uh, your point half or point 5 probability would have been here then this the same thing is happening so the temperature increase the effect in temperature only keeping doping part constant only widens the fermi dirac function here and here so it indicates that same number of electrons and holes are being freed being generated but if you increase the uh, doping or if you do doping you do not increase the temperature then that fermi level goes up or down and then new for oh sorry the fermi dirac function goes up or down and then fermi level also goes up or down but with respect to the new fermi level or significant fermi level ef not efi uh, the there is always a symmetry so the third statement is with ef significant ef there is always symmetry for f f e so with these three statements we conclude the picture of f f e fermi dirac function and the fermi level okay so these things will again appear in detail with the for the extrinsic semiconductors <coughs> so case a can be the only case for intrinsic semiconductor because there we are not doing any doping but for case b there could be both both the cases like fermi the, the fermi dirac function goes up and down so the fermi level new fermi level goes up or down uh, for uh, with respect to efi <laughs> similarly there may be temperature increase also in the extrinsic semiconductor so if temperature increases then there is a widening and uh, but but the ffe the fermi dirac function remains symmetric around ef new ef so that that's how i have maintained this okay so okay one important approximation need to be uh, mentioned because that is very useful most of the time in in some derivation or some numericals uh, like we know that uh, not even at room temperature let's say at any temperature the let me call this uh, at at temperature t at any temperature t it is f f e okay <clears throat> so this is the fermi dirac function profile at any temperature t so then we know that uh, the curve is given by the value uh, the the formula for this curve in general is f f e is in general 1 upon 1 plus e to the power e minus e f by k t, where this is e f. So for intrinsic semiconductor, e f, new Fermi level or old Fermi level, because Fermi level is always maintained, because only temperature can happen, or if temperature only happens or only varies, then Fermi level is maintained. So that that's what we have seen in the previous argument. So therefore, e f always will be e f i for intrinsic semiconductors. Okay. <coughs> so uh, th this ef is same curve so any anywhere if you uh, th this is basically the probability 
for P being filled by electron. Okay. So the, the same thing here if I indicate 1 minus FFE. So this is probability of E being filled by hole means not being not filled by electron means filled by hole because if there is no no electron then definitely there is a hole so okay <coughs> uh, that is one minus FFE so there comes an important approximation known as um, Boltzmann Maxwell or maximum Boltzmann approximation it is like If you see, this amount is of the order of 0.55 electron volts approximately for silicon or this amount because the whole band gap is 1.1 so almost half of it because we have assumed that Fermi level is somewhere in the bet in between even if it slightly goes up or down for extrinsic semiconductor even then we are somewhere around 0.4 or 0.55 so it is 0.55 you see this difference or this much energy is far far greater than the KT so we say that using Maxwell Boltzmann Maxwell Boltzmann approximation uh, what happens that we assume that if E minus EF is greater greater than KT and it will be definitely followed by all the energy levels above EC See, and basically we are only interested in energy levels above EC because we know within EC to EV there cannot be any significant there cannot be any energy level possible allowed energy level so therefore whatever energy level we are actually going to calculate for any numerical we are only doing e even uh, either within the conduction band or within the valence band so this is applicable for any energy level because you see the value of KT is around 0.026 electron volts and this is around greater than or equal to 0.55 electron volts that's what because above EC will be definitely more than this so if we are within EC then definitely we are more than this so not even if not more than this even if it is an extrinsic semiconductor EF move slightly up then even if it is 0 0.4 0 0.3 0 0.2 then still this amount is greater greater than this amount so this thing is almost maintained every time either it is um, uh, intrinsic semiconductor there definitely it is maintained or even if it is extrinsic semiconductor then also it is maintained specifically in the case of some degenerated semiconductors where this EF the new Fermi level above EFI moves far far away from EFI and it enters it, it touches EC or it eventually enters in the EC um, into the conduction band so those cases are called degenerated semiconductors so excluding those cases degenerated semiconductor that means excluding heavily doped semiconductors those are degenerated semiconductors that we'll see later on so excluding those cases for almost all in extrinsic semiconductors also follow this approximation that for this if this amount is much much greater than this then one could be neglected and we can take this factor up so first of all one could be neglected because e to the power is a very very huge number because this says that the power of exponential is a big number if it is a big number you can you can keep it means you can practice for example you take e to the power e minus ef you just take ec you don't go much deep if you even take the ec that means 0.55 approximately or 0.5 only divided by 0.026 then this would be i think this should be a value somewhere of the order 10 to the power 10 then including one is insignificant into it so therefore i am saying even if this is not 0.55 even if Fermi level actually goes slightly above or slightly down 
even in that case this value 0.4 or 0.3 or 0.2 is so high so that it gives a very very huge number so therefore this one could be neglected and therefore okay therefore f f e is approximated as so one will be neglected and this whole factor will come up so this will become e to the power minus e minus e f by k t so this is approximate but approximately uh, but um, uh, almost okay for all those cases where we are considering energy levels only above only within the conduction band only above ec but if you have to mark this profile if you have to calculate this thing exactly then you have to take the complete formula otherwise if you have to plot this curve above ec then you need not to take this complicated one you can only rely on this one similarly for 1 minus ffe we are interested in the uh, total concentration of holes we have used the, the, these functions so if we are interested in this then we can take 1 minus ffa is basically 1 minus first of all i'm writing exact 1 upon 1 plus e to the power e minus ef by kt and that that will give me uh, this thing will come up and 1 1 will get cancelled so this will remain e to the power e minus ef divided by kt upon 1 plus e to the power e minus ef by kt okay <coughs> so this is exact this is actual one even here or here but for the calculation of holes we know that this much range is not utilizable because there cannot be any relevant any allowed energy state within the energy band gap so we are only considering all the cases which are below the oh, valence band or within the valence band below ev so therefore if e minus ef is much much lower than kt again this happens for all energies within valence band because if you are within valence band then you are at least far away by this much amount so this value e minus ef will be minus 0.55 or much greater than that in magnitude so this will be much much lower than kt because that will be minus so this is a huge number but in magnitude so with minus sign this will be much much lower than kt so in that case this value will be a very very small value very very small for this case so therefore uh, and, and you can i guess you can find it this will be somewhere of this order exactly as we got somewhere around this I think you need to check it out. I guess this should be somewhere of this order. So this is insignificant to write in addition with 1. So only 1 remains significant here and therefore F1 minus FFE. And please understand the relevance of 1 minus FFE. 1 minus FFE is gives the probability of any energy state being filled by hole or first of all let me call it the probability of any energy state E of not being filled by an electron if it is not being filled by an electron that means it is being filled by a hole it is vacant so therefore we are interested in the concentration of holes in the valence band so we will be calculating this so therefore this is neglected and we are only remained with approximately with e to the power e minus ef by kt so this and this are more utilizable form because in order to calculate we have already done these ex, uh, these derivations though um, we have not seen them in detail uh, I have not calculated that integration but you know for calculating n number of free electrons we what did we do we multiplied GCE effective uh, the density of state function with F F E, the probability of an electron to fill an energy state E, e and we calculated from E C to infinity. So we were only interested in the shaded portion. 
because we know that only those places the allowed energy state is available so we calculated EC to infinity so for all EC to infinity energy levels this is the sufficient one so therefore if you keep FFE this here that will be more than enough or that will be a sufficient case so although we have not done this integration in detail but we know what results we have obtained so again just to briefly cover that we obtained what was the result the N is NC e to the power minus <coughs> uh, EC minus EF or EFI by KT okay similarly when we calculate number of free holes in the valence band obviously free holes will only lie in the valence band so then we did from EV to minus infinity or in the increasing order of this minus infinity to EV and we did GVE into 1 minus FFE so again when we write 1 minus FFE for all those energy which are within the valence band it is only sufficient to write this into DE and when we did this we found NVE to the power minus <coughs> EFI minus EV by KT. So maybe I wrote only EF and EF here but we know that for intrinsic semiconductor EF Fermi level is somewhere in the mid between in the mid gap and we can call it EFI the intrinsic Fermi level. So therefore we can write it like this. NC and NV we have already seen NC and NV are effective density of states. Uh, they are generally of the order of 10 to the power 19 for silicon. You can see the exact value as in the previous lecture but um, NC and NV ok no we, we discussed in the same lecture NC and NV values of 10 to the power 19 so 10 to the power 19 should be multiplied by some figure so that it comes around 10 to the power 10 we already are familiar with the number so now we can go for uh, numerical a quick numerical which will justify this ok so this is a quick numerical or you can call it a practice numerical because this is a standard figure we are going to justify so it says that calculate the intrinsic carrier concentration for silicon at room temperature 300 degree Kelvin. The effective density of states, the constants are well given to you. NC is this, NV is this, we have already seen these figures. And the band gap at room temperature, because we know it's a weak function of room temperature, uh, sorry the temperature. So at room temperature the band gap is 1.1 electron volt. So even if room temperature is not mentioned, anytime you can take uh, the band gap around 1.1 or 1.2 electron volts okay but 1.2 is, is, is more relevant at, at a very very low temperature or around absolute zero 1.1 is a standard figure 1.1 um, uh, electron volts at room temperature so if we now calculate for this you see <coughs> free electron concentration that means number of electrons per centimeter cube per unit volume or let me call it per unit volume is indicated by n so this is per centimeter cube so that we have seen is nc e to the power minus e c minus ef by kt Similarly, we have seen free holes concentration. So that is P indicated by P. P or N symbols have been taken only to indicate their uh, charge polarity. For an electron, the charge is negative, so we generally take N for negative. For holes, the charge is positive, the equal charge, but positive, so we take it P for positive. So that is that we have seen NV e to the power and for intrinsic EF anywhere is basically EFI. So <coughs> we, we have seen this figure that if this is EF and this is EC, this is EV. So this one thing which we are assuming from the very starting is Fermi level, intrinsic Fermi level is in between in the middle of the band gap. So that is still we need to prove. 
information with this prior information if this hole is the band gap eg which is 1.1 so only this half will be 0.55 this half only will be 0.55 electron volts so therefore uh, anywhere you can keep nc value is given to you 2.8 into 10 to the power 19 and this is a room temperature we have approximately seen this figure in in my previous argument this is somewhere around 10 to the power minus 10 so therefore this will bring you to, to 10 to the power 10 so this value is approximately 10 to the power minus 10 this value is approximately 10 to the power minus 10 that we have already um, approximated in the electric but you need to, now you know you have the calculators and you can calculate them exactly so now if you calculate them this comes around around 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube and this also comes around same 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube and as we expect because it is intrinsic so there always is the equal pair or, or equal number of electrons and holes because they are always in pair so this and this and therefore for intrinsic semiconductor we have a special symbol for this we indicate it as ni we indicate this is p and we indicate it as ni so this is the so because it is always understood that whenever we mention the concentration of electron that will be same as concentration of hole so we need not to say uh, repeat it for both every time so we only indicate so 10 to the power 10 free electrons or 10 to the power 10 free holes are available for per centimeter cube for the intrinsic silicon semiconductor so that is how now we have but the standard way to find the intrinsic carrier concentration is this if you have to directly calculate the intrinsic carrier concentration that means let's see how to directly come up with a figure ni so <coughs> we have seen that p which is ni because for intrinsic semiconductor the n is equals to p is equals to ni that we have seen so far because we know that there are equal number of free holes and free electrons um, every time at any temperature for intrinsic semiconductor so uh, now free holes per unit volume is ni is given by nv e to the power minus efi minus ev upon kt and n is also ni from this token is nc e to the power minus ec minus efi upon kt and if we multiply these two that means p into n that is ni square and this is also the mass action law you can see this is also proved this is so simple for intrinsic so the main benefit of mass action law comes for extrinsic semiconductor so here it is we need not to be happy that we have justified it so mainly we are trying to multiply onto the right hand side we are interested in this is nv into nc e to the power if you combine these two then i guess efi and efi will get cancelled so you will be remained with minus if you take outside this will be ec minus ev upon kt so very quickly you can say this so therefore ni square is nc nv or nv nc into e to the power minus eg by kt because eg is this if this is ec this is ev and this is somewhere efi so this difference is eg we have already seen this is ec minus ev so the band gap is ec minus ev so that anytime we can write this so this is constant as we have seen this is a constant let a because nc is a constant separately nv is a constant separately <coughs> so it is a constant a or we can write ni square is a e to the power minus eg by kt okay 
or you can write ni is equals to under root of a that is again a constant so a dash e to the power here if power under root comes it goes minus e g by 2 k t so actually it is ni but it is more easier to remember ni square so therefore we do it otherwise this you can remember where a dash is under root of a okay so <coughs> if you see if we are talking about any general temperature t then we are talking about the band gap at that temperature but if you want to keep that information on eg itself or if you take the information of temperature out of eg then we can replace this a dash or a by some another constant so first of all before that let us see uh, what is the nature of a so for that we need to remember nc and nv if you remember nc which is the effective density of a state at here or nv which is the effective density of a state at here they correspond to <coughs> the temperature in this manner sorry they corresponded to temperature only we want to see because temperature is a very important parameter so we are not interested in other effective masses or mobility or some Planck's constant or something so we are only focusing that NC the effective density of states in conduction band or effective density of states in valence band they are the function of temperature in this fashion so therefore if you do NC into NV they become uh, which is A so therefore A will be the function of temperature as T Q so therefore if you take that information outside then N I square is A naught into T Q into E to the power minus E G by K T where A naught is another constant then A. So from A which is NC into NV, again please check, A is NC into NV, some constant. So from NC and NV you have taken out the information of temperature because that is a relevant parameter, more more significant parameter and then whatever remains is called A0. So that is how we have written here. So uh, you, you need not to remember for this, so this is any constant. A naught is another constant or let me define it like this so A is A naught into T to the power 3 and this whole was NC into NV so like 4 into 2 pi MN star effective mass of whole effective mass of electron and effective mass of whole K y h square whole cube so this you can see the the, uh, the temperature is missing out there okay here we need to have t cube separately so this part only is a naught and if you can include t cube also there so that becomes a so we are really not interested in whether it is a naught or a cube we are interested mainly in this and sometimes in this also so this you should remember that how temperature varies, how the, I'm sorry, the intrinsic carrier concentration is a function of temperature. So this we have argued in my example, I, I explained you that at T is equals to zero Kelvin, that means at absolute zero, Ni. You can see Ni square anytime you can take under root. So if temperature is zero, so that means it is zero. There is no free carrier concentration at all. So if it get, goes around T is equals to 100K, then Ni could be some value 10 to the power 5 for silicon. I have not calculated, you need, you're supposed to calculate, but I'm just putting up some figures. You can justify it, I'm just approximating it. So 10 to the power 5 free electrons and 10 to the power 5 free holes because it is increasing function of this. So don't get confused with this because uh, they, they, uh, it, it appears like a, uh, in the denominator so if it comes up it uh, actually 
as a reverse function with negative sign so ultimately it is an increasing function of temperature as temperature increases and i increases and similarly at t is equals to 200 or let me calculate it for 300 kelvin it goes around this is very well known at room temperature we have calculated and in previous numerical that it is somewhere 10 to the power 10 and all these figures are per centimeter cube if we go around 600 Kelvin then also I have calculated some time it comes around 10 to the power 15 per centimeter cube so I'm not very sure about this value 100 K that you're supposed to calculate but I'm very very sure about 300 Kelvin at room temperature and at 600 degree Kelvin so these two figures are almost correct so that shows that how intrinsic carrier concentration is a function of temperature it's a strong function of temperature you will find a lot of numericals based on this formula so you have to keep the value of eg at that temperature so but you need not to worry about the band gap at room temperature or at 600 or at 700 kelvin because we know this is a weak function of temperature so it doesn't matter even if you write 1.2 or 1.1 uh, it, it matters somehow but it doesn't matter very much so therefore we, we generally take it at room temperature only so okay now <clears throat> a quick justification of the um, uh, fermi level being in between or in the middle of the energy band gap so for that we can start with this token It has been argued that at intrinsic semiconductor at thermal equilibrium, the thermal equilibrium means rate, uh, rate of recombination is same as rate of generation. So um, some equal amount of holes and electrons will be maintained. And for silicon we are repeatedly using this figure that at room temperature there are 10 to the power 10 electrons per centimeter cube and 10 to the power 10 holes per centimeter cube so that that value is maintained. So therefore the, the number of free electrons and free holes are always same at any at any temperature but there should be thermal equilibrium so for all the cases which are given to you will be thermal equilibrium if it is not thermal equilibrium then we'll discuss later on how to identify those cases which are not at thermal equilibrium so at thermal equilibrium this is a definite case so therefore let me write the n as nc e to the power. okay this is written over here uh, okay, then I'll have to repeat at least this NC e to the power minus EC minus EFI by KT is same as NV e to the power minus EFI minus EV by KT. And with this, if I take this either side and then this becomes NC by NV is equals to if E goes this side and if we take it up then this remains let's say minus uh, EFI minus EV and this comes up minus minus becomes plus EC minus EFI divided by KT so if it is the case then you see EFI and EFI are added in this case so this happens to be uh, e to the power <coughs> minus 2 EFI this is plus EC plus EV by 2 is equals to kt by 2 ln nv by nc now you see this is very interesting sorry efi and this says that efi is equals to ec plus ev by 2 plus kt by 2 ln NV by NC. Now you see this is very interesting because it tells us EC plus EV by 2 what is it? Let us understand this because there is some confusion into it. 
see we have an absolute reference somewhere here minus infinity and we have already discussed that we cannot name of any value of an absolute energy we cannot name any value for ev we cannot count any value of ec we can only have a difference in two energy states so we can only have a value for eg which is ec minus ev but we cannot have an absolute value of ec alone or ev alone so if you have to call this efi then we have to go there we have to go there and then we have to add these two and then we have to divide why am I explaining this? Because most of the time people identify EG, uh, oh sorry, EFI as the mid band as EC minus EV by 2. That is not the case. So EC plus EV by 2 is basically the middle value of the. So, so this is called the E mid band. Mid band means a middle value of EC and EV, exactly this. So this the, the middle value exactly half value in between is the first term plus now you see NC and NV we have already seen the values are not here so NC and NV we have already seen the only difference is oh sorry NV by NC the only difference is the effective masses so if you place the figures of NC and NV then there is NV above so NV is MP star here comes MN star so the only difference comes is all due to the difference between the effective masses of holes and effective masses of electron and we know that for most of the cases there is a very very insignificant difference between the effective masses of holes and electrons although effective mass of hole is slightly greater than effective mass of electron slightly greater than that or and all due to that the mobility of hole is less than the mobility of uh, electron that we'll see later on but uh, for for almost all the cases we can assume that this difference is not much and also we are taking ln of that log of that compresses the function compresses the value so even if this is a good value after taking log it becomes very very small value and after taking kt because that is also a very very small value so this all is almost negligible so therefore we can conclude that the intrinsic fermi level is found exactly approximately this and that is ec plus EV by 2. The argument which we have been using so far again and again that the Fermi intrinsic Fermi level is exactly in between the EC and EV. So that has been proved now with slight a very very small approximation that uh, there is plus some term which is negligible. So this term is slightly greater than 0 or very very small that means uh, the exactly the Fermi level is slightly above the mid band value so if this is EC if this is EV then this is the mid band value we cannot name any value for this again because it is a representation only that a middle value of EC and EV we cannot name any value for this but EC minus E mid band is half of EG E mid band minus EV is half of EG EG is this band gap so this band gap is EG. Okay, so the Fermi level, exact Fermi level is slightly above the E mid band gap, all due to this factor. But please remember this is only for a detailed discussion. Almost for all the numericals, you can forget this this effect, the, the difference in the effective masses of electrons and holes. Please remember the effective mass of hole is slightly greater than the effective mass of electron, and all due to that, there is a difference in mobility of both the carriers. But if we somehow make it negligible because we are taking ln of that and that 2 is multiplied with the very small number. So therefore this whole amount becomes very very small and we can forget it at all. You can always forget it. So the intrinsic Fermi level is always in the exactly in the middle of the mid band, uh, the, the band gap. Okay, so that's the derivation for this. So, okay, uh, let us uh, once again finalize the formula set. What we have seen so far is this that in the 
energy band diagram <coughs> this is the increasing direction of energy for the electrons in the atomic structure within the lattice structure specifically for silicon but that is also applicable for any semiconductor and this is the edge of valence band the high highest energy state possible in the valence band the lowest energy state possible in the conduction band and this all is conduction band this all is valence band and there are lots of energy states possible lots of energy states and that those those amount we can see we we can call effective <coughs> density of states effective number of density of states is nc and this is of the order of uh, somewhere around 10 to the power 19 per centimeter cube so those many available seeds are possible so similarly here the available seeds free seeds for free hole holes it is approximately again of the order of this and these figures are only for silicon for germanium they are slightly different one order less i guess but that you need to confirm from any academic or any literature <coughs> but these values will always be given to you you need not to memorize them but if we have some idea of the ranges then we can predict some some behavior so therefore if you see those many free seats or available seats are available for electrons to come and sit over there and then electron is free to move within the material so it is free to conduct similarly those many allowed energy states are available for holes with the converse analogy uh, and out of those many seats some holes can come and sit over here and then it is free to move within the lattice structure <coughs> so therefore out of this uh, we have seen the free hole concentration n is equals to ni because we are still under the topic intrinsic semiconductor so the uh, free uh, electron concentration number of electrons within one cubic centimeter volume <coughs> is this comes to be nc e to the power so uh, that is much much lower than that so this also we have proved that efi <coughs> let us first finalize this is almost at ec plus ev by 2 this is in between and this value is called e mid band so it's the middle value of uh, ec and ev band gap <coughs> okay so if we have efi then we can write here that this is minus ec minus efi by kt and similarly here out of those many seeds how many seeds are occupied by electron uh, by holes that means how many seeds which are not occupied by electron that means they are occupied by holes so those are p free hole concentration that means number of free holes uh, per cubic centimeter per unit volume so that is again ni that is nv e to the power minus efi minus ev by kt so if you see this amount is much much less than one so therefore when it gets multiplied with this which is a number around 10 to the power 19 so this in totality give us some value around 10 to the power 10 so we already have this figure in our mind for silicon at least that this number up comes around 10 to the power 10 at room temperature this number comes again same so <coughs> for intrinsic semiconductor again we can conclude that n is equals to p is equals to ni so this is very very important for intrinsic semiconductor that is the title mass section law says that n into p is equals to ni square this is very much obvious from here so in fact this mass action law is not very significant in the case of intrinsic semiconductor we uh, seemingly cannot utilize it in much extent but for extrinsic semiconductor this one proves to be one very excellent relation where we fetch out lot of lots of information okay but still it is valid for both the cases for intrinsic and extrinsic and what else we have seen <coughs> okay then effect of temperature we have seen we can calculate ni from here or from here because both are same or if we want to observe the intrinsic carrier concentration as a function of temperature then it is better to observe ni or ni square as e naught some constant to t to the power 3 
into e to the power minus band gap upon kt. So that is also very important. And if you do ni only, then that is under root a naught, or let me call it a naught dash. Please um, maintain the similarity with the notations which I maintained in, um, just now. So <coughs> a naught dash e to the power 3 by 2 e to the power minus e g by 2 k t because you are taking roots to the right side. So better to remember an i square anytime we can calculate the under root of right hand side. So a naught dash specifically again you need not to remember this value if it at all is required for any numerical will be provided to you. But if you again remember this thing then um, for lot many cases you can intuitively uh, come up with some 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 better answer so therefore this is somewhere around somewhere around 5.2 into 10 to the power 15 so this is a constant it is like this you can fetch out some units if it at all is required so <coughs> so now these sets of formulae are applicable for any semiconductor but these two figures I have specifically kept for silicon. Similarly, this figure I have kept for silicon because this constant includes effective mass, which is different for different different semiconductors. Effective mass of electrons and holes only, but electron and hole they find different scenario, different atmosphere within different different lattice structure. So the effective mass of an electron is different from a silicon to a germanium. Effective mass of a hole free hole is different from a silicon to a germanium or gallium arsenide. So therefore these this data is also valid only for silicon. Otherwise if it at all is required for any other semiconductor it will be definitely provided to you. So this much information we have seen and how does the Fermi Dirac function varies at absolute zero it is to be like this where this is the scale of FFE Fermi Dirac function. So the it is 1 here, it is 0 here and somewhere in between it is 0.5. So in intrinsic semiconductor the only reason could be increase of temperature because we are not inserting any external impurity that is doping. We have not gone for in extrinsic semiconductor. So so far we are within the intrinsic semiconductor. So the only reason available to increase the um, carrier concentration, the, the only effective reason I must say is temperature only. You can have some uh, <coughs> photo projection, uh, some light projection onto this, you can have some external effects but those all lead you to the non-equilibrium cases. For some equilibrium case only, if we move temperature from one point to another point and, and if we maintain it, then carrier concentration also changes. So the only significant effect in intrinsic semiconductor for increase in the carrier concentration is temperature, the variation in temperature. So this we have seen is for 0 degree Kelvin that means absolute 0 and for any other general temperature it goes like this. So I am writing this for any any temperature like this. So it depends if temperature is larger it gets more wider more wider but it maintains symmetry around EFI because EFI is the final Fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor. For extrinsic we will be discussing it later on. So okay, for, for, uh, with, with all these informations you are now ready to do any numerical for carrier concentration for int ext uh, intrinsic semiconductors. Then similarly the similar study will be done for um, extrinsic semiconductor. Okay, so let us quickly do one numerical for it. Okay, so let us say the problem is to determine the density of electron for silicon at uh, this temperature as well as at this temperature. So this temperature is obviously the room temperature. So, okay. But you will be definitely provided with certain data otherwise we cannot proceed. <coughs> like if we have to calculate the density of electron is the N or electron concentration number of electrons per unit volume. So that is N only and that is same as Ni. So you can go for either this and we e to the power minus uh, electrons okay so, so this is ec minus efi by kt so either you can go for this or ni as we have seen a naught dash t to the power 3 by 2 e to the power minus eg by 2 kt 
because ni square was a naught e to the power 3 e to the power minus eg by kt if you take under root to the right hand side we come to this so therefore if you see because temperature is given and the problem problem's intention is to identify the relation of intrinsic carrier concentration with respect to the temperature so in order to uh, practice that we that this becomes much more significant otherwise uh, we should have been provided by the information of some EC minus EFI. So if that is not given, although it's a well-known fact that for silicon we, we know this value, but if it is not provided, then the intention is to utilize this formula. So if we utilize this, uh, this will be given to you in a numerical. So uh, even though I have not mentioned here, but you know, dash will be given to you. And this is as a, uh, this is of this value for silicon. So therefore, <coughs> if you calculate at room temperature, this is Ni is equals to 5.2 into 10 to the power 15, T to the power 3 by 2, that means 300 degree Kelvin to the power 3 by 2 into E to the power minus Eg will also be provided to you. So any standard information you need not to remember that is definitely provided to you in any uh, numerical but it is always better to have some uh, figures in your mind because if at all you, you want to confirm it uh, analytically you can anytime do it but this EG will also be provided to you and because <coughs> okay so EG at, at room temperature this EG is 1.1 electron volt so minus 1.1 electron volt then this also needs to be in electron volts kt so 2 into kt is 26 milli electron volt or 0 0.026 electron volt so 0 0.026 okay then you can calculate this this Very quickly you can identify this is 1.08 or effectively 1 only into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter. I have not written in unit here, I am writing it here. So you can calculate this and so we, we have already calculated this uh, calculated the same figure with this in, in the previous numerical, some numerical sometime before. We have calculated in from this and the same figure we are getting. So we can you know utilize any of these two forms. But here the um, intention is to observe the uh, the uh, carrier concentration change with respect to the temperature. So the next one is at 600 degree Kelvin. Okay. So there Ni would be, Ni means electron concentration only, but because it is intrinsic, so anytime we can call it Ni. So it is again 5.2, the same formula, 5.2 into 10 to the power 15 into T this time is 600 to the power 3 by 2 into this is E to the power minus now see this EG is the band gap of silicon at that temperature at which we are calculating this whole figure so obviously EG at room temperature this is a well known fact or otherwise it will be provided to you again here EG is supposed to be given at 600 degree Kelvin so as I have already cautioned you that uh, the band gap is not a very very significant function of temperature, it's a weak function of temperature. We have seen from absolute zero it has a value 1.2 and at room temperature means after 300 degree Kelvin increase it goes around 1.1 only. So it reduces by 0.1. So even if we go around 600 degree Kelvin, uh, it will be approximately 1.05 or around 1.1 because that, that's not strictly given to us in this numerical it should be given to you but if it is not given we will take the same figure by the token by, by this assumption that the band gap is not changing significantly with respect to temperature though it is a function of temperature we all know it and anytime you can calculate EG from the formula I told you uh, EG naught minus beta T beta rate I very well mentioned to you and T is the temperature, EG naught is the 
uh, band gap value at absolute zero. So from this you can anytime calculate this if beta is given to you then beta is required. So if at all from the numerical point of view if beta is not given to you if nothing is mentioned you will assume that the band gap is almost constant with respect to temperature. So we will take the same value here 1.1 so it is approximate only. So here it is again 1.1 upon 2 into now kt will change at uh, see the 0 0.026 electron volt thermal energy at room temperature is a well known fact so I directly wrote this here but the value kt at 600 degree Kelvin is not very well known to me as well so I need to calculate it so uh, I will be writing the formula of k and then t so kt at 600 degree Kelvin so <coughs> if you try to calculate this I will be writing the formula for k that is so if k is not memorized anytime you can calculate it like this so k was uh, 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joules per degree Kelvin because this is an important figure or generally uh, fed into our calculators but that is joule per degree Kelvin and what value we require here is an electron volt so that electron volt and electron volt remain in the same unit so but f at this time you can only write it like this into k is 600 Kelvin so if you calculate it this comes around okay so this comes around 8.28 into 10 to the power minus 21 joules because degree Kelvin degree Kelvin gets cancelled and it is joules so <coughs> we know because uh, joule is a larger unit so this is a, uh, a very very small figure so if you want to convert it into electron volts you want you you know that we need to divide it by q one q one uh, charge of one electron so this is same as 8.28 into 10 to the power minus 21 upon 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 electron volts see all that I am doing only because if you have forgotten the value of k in electron volts per degree Kelvin so that I have mentioned earlier but if you are not remembering this because this is standard value every time we can remember this so like this you can anytime convert it so this comes around 0 0.05175 electron volts Okay, so this is the value. So if I keep it here, 0 0.051. So as you can see, 0 0.052. So you see, from 0 0.026, it has gone to 0 0.052, and instead it should have been like simply like, uh, very simply, because this was k t, and now t was 300. So now it has gone to 300 to 600 so into 2 will directly give you the new value so this we uh, could have done like that also but at any time at any temperature if you do not know any value then you can go you can proceed it like this so therefore <coughs> this gives me so now please notice one last comment so this is the answer these are the answers at 300 degree Kelvin we are getting this which is a standard value which we already remember and at 600 degree Kelvin especially this and these two figures you see if the temperature increase by increases by 300 degree Kelvin beyond the room temperature though it is a large value 600 degree Kelvin is far enough so if we increase this much temperature then we get some appreciable amount of free electrons Similarly, if you try to calculate free holes, this will come as the same figure because this is intrinsic semiconductor. This example is for intrinsic semiconductor. We all know that due to the temperature, there is a, a pair generation, means an electron is generated in addition with a uh, generation of a hole, free hole. So the um, if you calculate P, this will be same as P. This will be same as P. Uh, the free electrons per unit volume, free electrons, uh, sorry, free holes per unit volume and free holes per unit volume at 300 or at 600 degree Kelvin <coughs> but the point to notice is that once we go from 300 to 600 degree Kelvin we get a very appreciable figure because we have already um, argued that for a good current a smart current a healthy current 
at room temperature for commercial applications the carrier concent concentration should be around 10 to the power 14 10 to the power 15 or 10 to the power 16 now we are getting that figure but there are two problems one very basic problem i already mentioned that this we are getting <coughs> by increase in temperature so any time we cannot rely any effect on incremented temperature we would not like to operate our device we would not like to achieve a good current by simply heating up our electronic devices or you cannot bear that temperature so any human being would like to operate anything at room temperature so we want this figure at room temperature anyhow but that is not happening because all because of this increase in temperature we are getting this figure so that is first problem that we want this figure at room temperature we cannot rely on temperature Secondly, if temperature increases, it increases the thermal agitation, lattice vibrations. So a lot of abnormal effects also come into the picture. Like mobility degradation that we will see later on, but that effect also comes into the picture. Additionally, um, with increment in temperature, we increase both types of carriers. Electrons as well as holes. So at the start it looks convenient that it's good enough to increase the uh, number of free holes and number of free electrons because if current takes place due to electric field we'll be looking at that in the next topic but if current takes place due to uh, the electric field then electron will move in this direction hole will move in this direction so the direction of positive charge is only in the direction of uh, current so therefore if hole moves in this direction and electron moves in this direction so the, the current due to electron will also be in this direction so ultimately the total current will be the addition of these two so the electron current in this direction will also support the current final current in this direction so therefore um, if we have both types of carriers in equal amount so we'll get an additional benefit because the current will be somehow doubled somehow doubled because this is not exactly doubled because the mobilities are different from our electrons and holes that we'll see again in the next section but we um, saw a, a very uh, conceptual definition of analog electronics or electronics or semiconductor electronics that we do not want to generate a current only at commercial applications. In electronics or in semiconductor electronics, we basically are more interested in to control or to achieve the control on that current. So in order to do that, there should be a dominance of one type of carriers over others. So this effect is felt when we start studying the extrinsic semiconductor. Uh, but at this level you can understand if we have both types of carriers, we cannot effectively control electrons over holes or holes over electrons because both are um, with the equal strength, both are comparable in strength. So therefore if if there is only one type of carrier in great extent uh, with respect to another type of carrier like electrons are 10 to the power 15 uh, but holes are not at that level holes are still at 10 to the power 10 or 10 to the power 8 then there could be a scenario that a significant current is achieved and by some some interesting phenomena by some interesting mechanisms we can control we can achieve some control over the current by developing some junctions or something so that we'll uh, study later on. So this second point that if both types of carriers are increasing seems to be good enough and that is a good point because the, um, the, the current is <coughs> addition of both the effects, the current due to holes and current due to electrons. But uh, in order to come up with the modern devices which rely on PN junction, then it is not a good, uh, it doesn't provide a good control mechanism. So for that we are looking for dominance of one type of carrier over other. So due to these two reasons, but primarily the, the first reason that we cannot sit on a furnace and use these electronic systems or electronic devices. So anyhow we cannot increase this much temperature. This is a huge temperature. A human being cannot even think of this temperature. We cannot even think of some 20 or 30 degree more than 300 because then we will be around 50 degree centigrade or 60 degree centigrade. Uh, that is not feasible for a human being so we have to get this figure at room temperature so therefore we studied the effect of temperature because in, in most of the chemical processing or manufacturing we can encounter this temperature range or much beyond than this 
but definitely this will not be a, a favorable point or a favorable uh, task um, to increase the amount of carriers so for that we will not rely on the increment of temperature at least ok one more very quick example so here we have to calculate the free carrier concentration for germanium so ok we already know this figure that comes around 10 to the power 13 please remember 10 to the power 10 is the figure only for silicon for germanium in that table which we produced in, in lecture number 1 uh, there we have seen that the free carrier concentration of germanium at room temperature is around 10 to the power 13 2.4 into 10 to the power 13 so it, it appears or it seems that germanium has a better free carrier concentration but there are lots of other benefits of silicon over germanium so we still prefer silicon for most of the commercial applications for uh, most of the integrated circuit industries so that we have already seen the figure this numerical is just to prove that point okay <coughs> so again we can utilize free carrier concentration mean that means either n or p which is same as ni so that we can either go by nc e to the power <coughs> minus ec minus efi by kt this will be same as nv so this is for n this is for p but both both values are same so nv e to the power minus EFI minus EV formula remains same just the value change so this value which is around 10 to the power uh, 19 is only for silicon please remember so I am not going to use this formula so I am not going to write the values for this you can uh, refer any literature to understand to, to remember the values NC and NV effective density of states for germanium at room temperature so that you can go from there but th th this is one way and for this we need to know <coughs> that eg the band gap of germanium is around approximately 0 0.67 electron volts at room temperature so ec minus efi the scenario is exactly the same efi even if it is silicon or germanium or any other semiconductor there is a general derivation there is a general proof that the Fermi level lies exactly in between and this is EC, this is EV so this band gap EG is around this value so therefore EC minus EFI will be half of this whatever it comes I am not interested similarly EFI minus EV is this much the next half this will be again 0 0.67 by 2 so these two half are values this and this so but these values will be given to you for any numerical otherwise you can remember this at room temperature this happens to be like this and I have told you even even if room temperature is not maintained if it is some 100, 200 or 300 degree below or 100, 200, 300 degree up it only matters that 0 0.6 will go to 0 0.7 or 0.5 so there is a very slight change this, this band gap is a weak function so you can remember that for all the important variations of the temperature for our numericals we can fix these values at least ok so I am not going to use this one I will be using another form or if we have to get Ni so these two forms are much more relevant for extrinsic cases that we will see in the next section so we can use this a naught dash e to the power minus sorry t to the power minus 3 by 2 e to the power minus eg by 2 kt because we have taken roots to the right hand side and this value at room temperature <coughs> you know need to know this value uh, this is around 0.66 into 10 to the power 15 so this is the value of this again you need not to remember this for germanium it is this and then we have to calculate at 300 to the power 3 by 2 into e to the power minus eg uh, eg has been given Here again you require this 0 0.67 by 2 into kt at room temperature it is 0 0.026 so when you calculate this this comes around 2.4 into 10 to the power 13 per centimeter cube 
you can calculate this using your calculators and this is the value which we already know so this is a confirmation of the fact that the uh, free carrier concentration of germanium is three order at least three order more than that of a silicon but again i'm cautioning you there are lots of other benefits of silicon that makes it much more superior than germanium otherwise for germanium the carrier concentration is much higher than silicon okay again you can practice that if you increase this 300 to 600 there will be at least uh, 4 to 5 order increase so uh, that that you can see anytime <coughs> but again this this will not be a key parameter temperature will not be a key parameter to increase to come up with the more number of free carriers I have already cautioned you for that will not be relying on temperature but if somehow temperature changes and you need to calculate the new carrier concentration then you should know this relationship so this this formula is very much applicable uh, for ni but whenever you have to relate everything from the intrinsic fermi level up and down then we try to utilize these two forms but if you have to calculate the free carrier concentration with respect to temperature variation then we would be more tempted to use this form so that we have already seen okay so with this we will be now moving into the next section um, in the next lecture thank you